For this edition, I'm going to look at some interesting and different ways to work with audio and data as you patch. I'm going to start with a pretty standard Visi patching example that includes a player module connected to a Bricoser module with a viewer module used to display the visual results. I've also added a fader module that lets me manually adjust the video's saturation. Visi has two different kinds of connections, video and data. Video connections are labeled with text, and data connections are represented by colored dots. Any video outlet can be connected to any other video inlet. Similarly, all Visi data connections send and receive floating point numbers in the same range, 0 to 1.0. That common range means that we can also connect any data outlet to any other data inlet. That's the Visi you know and love. Now, let's try something a little different. I'll begin by clicking on the lock icon in the patcher toolbar to unlock the patch, and then clicking and dragging to create a patch cord that connects the video outlet of the player module to the data inlet of the fader object. Take a look at what's happening with this connection. As the video plays, the fader is moving, which indicates that it's receiving floating point number values. That's exactly what's happening, in fact. When any Visi video output is connected to any Visi data input, the module internally averages the values of red, green, and blue for every pixel in the movie, and then automatically converts the result to a floating point value in the normal Visi data range. Since the output of the fader is already connected to the Bercoser module's saturation data input, that means I'm now using video output to directly set the saturation level of the Bercoser module's video input. This kind of conversion is done for any video to data connection. So what happens when you connect a data output to a video input? To see the result, I'll click on the patch cord that connects the video output of the Bercoser module to the viewer module to select it, and then hit the delete key to remove the connection. Next, I'll click and drag to connect the output of my fader module to the viewer module's video inlet. Given what you know about video to data connections now, you may be able to guess what the result will be. When any Visi video input receives Visi data values in the range of 0 to 1.0, the data values are mapped to red, green, and blue color values and used to generate a frame of video. Of course, since all three color values are the same number, the resulting video is a gray image somewhere between black and white, depending on the floating point input value. So Visi allows you to work in both directions using video to generate data, and using data to generate video. You may be wondering whether it's possible to take video input and output red, green, and blue averages as separate data streams. Well, there's a Visi generator module created for just that purpose. It's called the Analyzer. To add an Analyzer module to this patch, click on the Visi icon to display the Visi browser, navigate to the Generators tab, and then click and drag to add an Analyzer module to the patch. Click and drag to connect any video output to the Analyzer module's input. When the module receives video, you'll see a visual display of the average red, green, and blue values shown, and also, the red, green, and blue values are available from the module's data outlets from left to right, red, green, and blue. There's also a way to combine three data inputs to generate a colored video output, the Visi Primer Generator Module. To add a primer module to your patch, click on the Visi icon again to display the Visi browser, navigate to the Generators tab, and click and drag to add a primer module to your patch. I'll use the Analyzer module that we've just added to demonstrate how this works. Click on the Fader to Viewer connection to select it, and then hit the Delete key to disconnect that connection. Now, connect the red and green data outputs of the Analyzer module to the data inputs of the Primer module, and then connect the video outlet of the Primer module to the viewer. You'll see a change in color constructed by using the average red and green values 
for each frame of video. In this case, we're only using two colors because connecting all three of them would simply give us a grayscale image. So I hope that this suggests an interesting possible patching future for you. Until next time, happy patching.